Over a 60-year career, Leslie Brickus has composed over a thousand songs, providing hits for the likes of Nina Simone, Frank Sinatra and Shirley Bassey, to name a few. This week, a stage show celebrating his work as one of show business's most prolific film and musical theatre songwriters gets its world premiere in the West End. Leslie, welcome to London Live. Thank what you, an honour to have you here. Pure Imagination opens at the St James Theatre uh, on Thursday. What do Londoners have to look forward to from it? Well, it's a, a compendium. It's a, it was a matter of choosing favourite songs from a fairly large list. We could hardly put a thousand songs into one <laughs> evening. We'd have been there for a week. Um, and it, it was really a case of the director and myself choosing a well-balanced evening that would work in the theatre. So it's a mixture of film and stage songs. I mentioned some of the artists that you've written hits for, the likes of Nina Simone, Frank Sinatra and Shirley Bassey. Do you have a favourite among the many artists that you've worked with over the years? Yes, I guess I would have to say Sammy Davis Jr. because we, we spent most of the 60s being recorded by Sammy. He recorded over 60 of my songs, one man, and he was very fond of Tony Newley, my first partner, and myself. And we became great friends, and he, uh, he recorded almost everything we wrote at one stage. But that tends to happen. You get relationships, um, like uh, Frank Sinatra had Kahn and Van Heusen, Sammy Kahn and Jimmy Van Heusen, who were pals of his, and they record recorded. And with Liza Minnelli, um, it was um, Candor and Ebb, John Candor and Fred Ebb, who wrote Cabaret in Chicago, wonderful shows, wonderful writers. And um, those relationships become friendships, and it just, you grow together. Given that those relationships become friendships, I'd imagine that the sorts of people coming to see this show in London are going to be pretty A-list over the next few weeks, aren't they? Well, uh, I, I don't care if they're A-list or Z-list. Uh, I think, yes, we've got a lot of pals coming, uh, you know, from uh, various associations and shows gone by. And... Uh, old friends in London will come and see it. I hope a few other people will come and see it as well. <laughs> and getting its world premiere here in London, how uh, significant, how important was that for you? Well, it, it, it started here, it all started here um, many years ago when Tony Newley and I had our first hit, which was called Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. And then we did a string of musicals here. And then our careers took us to Broadway and then from there to Hollywood. So we, uh, we kind of went with the flow. Why wouldn't we? But nice to be back in the capital, of I'd imagine. Of course, always. Now, the show shares its name with your uh, forthcoming biography, which sounds like a fascinating read. Out later this month, I think I'm right in saying. Well, one, one grew out of the other, really. I'd been wanting to do a book for a long time, and... Uh, the title just happened to fit perfectly. It, it's about songwriting, and uh, so we thought, why not give the two the same title and have them open at the same time? Mm. And among uh, the many stories of your life and your career in the book, you also touch on your close friendship with, with Jackie Collins and thoughts, of course, with her nearest and dearest at the moment. How much of a, of a shock did it come to hear of her death? Well, it, it, it was a total shock. I mean, not, it, not even her sister Joan knew about it um, because my, my wife, Evie, is, uh, was the best friend of both sisters. In fact, she knew Jackie. Even we knew, we've known Joan 50 years because she was married to Tony Newley. And so the four of us shared a lot of our lives. But Evie knew Jackie as a schoolgirl, they were they were sort of they began in their teens together. So it's a very long friendship and a very precious one, because Jackie was a, a wonderful woman and uh, we loved her very much. And she was sort of the headquarters of the California gang because she organised our lives in California, and she's a great loss for a lot of reasons.